So today I want to welcome Dave. Dave, raise your hand. Say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. And his counselor, Sandra. Well, Hi. You, you can say something if you want to, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> hello. All right. Now, I want to say up front, this is a very special video conversation that we're going to be having here. Um, it deals with the use of the core the core of the optimal EFT process for what is the by far the most extreme uh, traumatic events one can imagine. Um, it has to do with satanic ritual abuse. Dave, Dave was um, a victim of that for, is it 53 years, Dave? Yes, 53 years. Uh, 50 years. In our previous conversation, I think it's starting at like around age two, as far as you can remember. Well, I was born into uh, a family that was, my mom and dad were part of the cult, so uh, it starts right at the beginning. It starts okay. before me. Okay, so I, I want to kind of give a little summary here up front for everybody. And I want everybody to know that it's listening in, that the examples given here are going to be very, very, graphic. Um, it's the kind of thing, if you don't have a strong stomach, you probably don't, don't want to watch this. But the reason we're going to be graphic here is because the level of trauma here compared to what people normally think of as very traumatic events, is it, it, this is way above that. Oftentimes we think of the pinnacle of traumatic things would be post-traumatic stress disorder, our war veterans have it, childhood abuse victims have it, and this kind of thing. This is many levels above that. And I personally have dealt with people that have had been subject to satanic ritual abuse in the past with the tapping form of EFT. And in every case that I've dealt with, we got better, that is, some of the memories that involved were not as intense, they could live through them better, et cetera, but we didn't really wipe it out by, by any means, there was still a lot left, okay? Now, what's important to recognize here is while Dave and Sandra were not using um, optimal EFT, because it wasn't even designed you know, at the time they were doing all of this, they were using the center piece of it. They were calling on the spiritual dimension. In this case, Dave was, a, like I am, as a student of A Course in Miracles, he would be calling on Jesus. He would be calling on Holy Spirit, which are other names for unseen therapists. Okay. So let me begin this with some very graphic stuff, and then I'm going to engage Dave and Sandra, his counselor, to walk us through what really happened here, okay? And I'm gonna give you examples of satanic ritual abuse that I have heard from those I've dealt with prior to this. I can recall one of those being a, one of the events being somebody had to murder their own dog and eat it. That's one. There was another one where the limbs were torn off of a living person right before the eyes of someone having to do it. Another case, somebody had to actually pull the limbs off of another person, fingers, arms, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And one of the more graphic ones that still stays with me was a five-year-old, a girl, a lady who was five years old at the time. She, rec she recalls herself lying in the dirt. This is a, it, was a, it was a cult. I'm going to call it a party, for, like, gathering for lack of a better term. And at the time, she was being sexually abused by three male, full-grown males, orally, vaginally, and anally, all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And she could hear in the distance, while she, and she couldn't even breathe, she could hear a baby crying, looked up, and saw a baby being barbecued alive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, that's graphic, graphic, graphic. I understand that but I do that for the point of view of talking about this is trauma above trauma above trauma above trauma. It is the most difficult thing to take care of around, and Dave is an example where we bring in, in his case, Holy Spirit. 
where these events no longer bother him. Do I have that right, Dave? Yes, that's right. I've passed, uh, have, I've passed uh, the point of having any problems with uh, the things that happened in my childhood or even in my adult life. Okay. Uh, and you had also told me that you were drugged through most of this to the point where you didn't even remember any of it until you were age 53. Well, you know, we read in the newspaper all the time about the date rape drug. Uh, my experience uh, it tells me there's many different kinds of drugs that uh, allow different things to happen, but all of them share the common characteristic that you won't remember anything that happened after you were fed that drug in a, in a drink, in food, uh, or any other way. Yeah. Okay, but then at age 53, these memories started showing up. You called them body memories. Describe what was happening, could you? Well, at age 53, well, I, I had been angry all my life. Angry, and I would, I would uh, get very angry at the slightest provocation. And then, of course, have remorse for hurting those you cared about. And I finally realized that I was the cause of the problems in our marriage, so I decided to see a therapist, and I, and I went to see Sandra. Uh, the Holy Spirit led me to her, I believe, or the unseen therapist led me to Sandra. And uh, shortly after meeting with Sandra, I started having body memories. And I, if, if I can, I'd like to just describe body memories. Sure. In his book, The Biology of Belief, Dr. Bruce Lipton states that each cell in our body is an entity unto itself, and as such has its own brain. And all these cells are connected energetically and uh, together constitute our subconscious. And that's where all these memories are stored. The subconscious is like a tape recorder. It doesn't miss anything. It's all inside of us if we can, uh, if we can put ourselves in a state to, to recall them. And so I started having memories, memories that told me my life as I remembered it was, was not at all what it actually had been. And so thus my, my healing journey uh, began. Uh, okay. Using Sandra of some other therapists, and eventually Sandra kind of led me along a spiritual path, which I hadn't, uh, I hadn't been spiritually oriented before that point. Okay. And so these body memories, I mean, were they uncomfortable? Were they painful? Were they, uh, give me well, an example. Well, you, I, like, perverted sex is part and parcel of Satanism. Sodomy is a favorite pastime because they can uh, affect your, uh, your energy, your energy field, They're putting their energy inside of you. So that starts at a very young age, and that occurred to me my whole adult life. The last time I was sodomized in front of a group of people, I was drugged, and I was in my 50s. And... Uh, there's just many, many things. At three years old, the cult I was in, this was the time when they would try and get a, a boy to join the cult. Yes. So they would manufacture these events where I would be manipulated to kill a human being with a knife. And yes. so they would have it set up so that I would believe I'm saving either myself or some other little kids. And uh, But I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't hurt anybody, and that infuriated the cult. Uh, my dad and my grandpa, my grandpa was the cult leader. And so there was, every time I refused, I was uh, beat, tortured, subject to uh, mind control programs, sodomy. So Three-year-old memories went on for quite some time. Uh, my grandpa was concerned because as a younger boy at two, the, the training in my cult, or the cult I was uh, born into, started actually at two years old. And at two years old, they took you to events designed to measure your courage, will, and compassion, and to discover any other spiritual gifts you may have, because the cult wants to know uh, the gifts and attributes of their offspring so they can utilize them for the cult at a later date. Okay. And so, uh, but at three years old, then they intensified greatly to these horrific uh, events. And I've had many of those at three and at four. And I uh, somehow, 
uh, you know, I believe the NC therapist was with me the whole time, of course. Uh, I, I wouldn't do what they wanted, and I was defiant about it. And uh, so my, my, my grandpa worked overtime in his basement on me. They wanted to rid me of every iota of compassion within me so that I would become like them and think of myself first and foremost. And then I, could be, then I would become part of the cult. And, and, and Dave, I, I think what you're talking about here is something really important to bring up. And that is there, if, if I have this correct, the perpetrators here at the higher levels are, this is my term now, master, masters at brainwashing, if that's to use that term, masters at shifting somebody's psyche to something else, you know, absolute masters at this. And as a result of that, they, they implant um, a lot of memories, a lot of psychic stuff that is that is nearly impossible for the human therapist the human counselor to try to unravel am i saying that right sandra yeah i would uh, if i can just back up for just a moment you sure. asked a question earlier gary about what were body memories and i think we started down that road and kind of got uh sidetracked a bit but your body will remember whatever has happened to you and in Dave's case, because of the amount of sodomy, he was experiencing a lot of discomfort in his bottom and uh, hips and other places where his body had been offended. And this happens over and over again. I have clients that, uh, for example, if they've been burned, will break out in blisters, you know, when they recall the memory. So your body remembers everything. So that's the first place that I'd like to back up to. Um, the second thing, if I can back up to this business of what horrific things happen, are, are you okay if I sort of share a few of those? Uh, yes, and people are, are, again, advised this gets very graphic. So if you don't want to listen, don't listen. Go ahead. One of the things I'd suggest you do while you're listening is maybe some deep breathing, maybe some tapping, uh, prayer, just because we cannot run from this. It's here, and it's uh, partially hidden, but we need people with courage to be able to stand up and face it. So if you can do your tapping, do your, in my uh, view of things, swaying, take deep breaths, pray, do whatever you need to do to bring yourself back to balance, and keep in mind that you are safe where you are right now, and if you are really reacting to this, you might want to ask yourselves why. Um, some of the things that, uh, as a background, this has been going on for thousands of years, and it went underground with the advent of the churches. And uh, it really was raised to a fine art in Nazi Germany. But And you would think that people like Dr. Mengele, who uh, kept exacting records of how to torture and bring it down to an exquisitely fine art, would have been sent to prison, you know, during the trials and so on. But indeed, they were, they were brought to the United States under Operation Paperclip, given new identities, paid big fat salaries by the CIA, and there are many, many books on this if you want to check it out. And under a program called MK Ultra, they were, um, they tortured some two million Americans, and there's a great book by a girl called Carol Rutz called A Nation Betrayed, which outlines all of this. There are just many, many books on this. There are different types of satanic abuse and ritual abuse, and some of them um, involve high tech, some of the military training, uh, you know, the long kiss goodnight and American Ultra movies that address that. Uh, but the deep ancient satanic stuff, they know the secrets for torturing and using seeds and other things to take soul parts out, to put other parts in and and basically alter you and use you the way they want to do. To do. And there's a book called Psychic Dictatorship by Alex Constantine. And what he says is that, you know, back when they would do torture and drugging and now they're using frequency to do this. But 
you know, to disenfranchise you from your very self, your very spiritual self. And that's part of why we need this spiritual awakening and this spiritual recognition because there really are invisibles out there, you know, as most of the world knows, but we in the West feel we're too um, sophisticated for that. Yeah. And, and, are there. and that, 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 and thank you for that, Senator, because that brings mm -hmm. us now into the, the use of, you call it the invisibles, the unseen therapist, the spiritual dimension. Mm -hmm. And so, I'll leave it up to Sandra as, as the counselor or Dave to tell us how you use the the unseen therapist. I, I mean, David, tell me, you know, off camera here earlier, it was the Holy Spirit from A Course in Miracles was 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 his primary thing, and you were given prayers and things like this. So talk about how that unfolded, um, if you would, either one of you. Well, it seems to me I should go back to the beginning because Sandra's whole procedure called in the unseen therapist all the time, yet I didn't know that at the time because I wasn't ready to think along those terms. But uh, she would ask the, and Sandra, correct me if I'm wrong about anything here, but always she, yeah, she likes correcting me. <laughs> Sandra would ask the uh, Christ consciousness or the unseen therapist uh, for the priority for me at that particular time, as she does for every other clients also. And then uh, that would kind of come to her and we would muscle test to uh, ascertain the veracity of, the, of what the priority was. So uh, most times, oftentimes it was at age three, four, or five, and there was an adult present or sometimes there was the cult were present. And so I would just close my eyes, concentrate on that age and the people present and go into that memory. And it would come it would come very quickly usually. And, uh, and I've had hundreds upon hundreds of them from all different ages uh, of the satanic rituals and just the other acts that have been perpetrated against, uh, against me over this life. Well, let, let, me, let, let me ask you, uh, you said you had hundreds of these memories. Did you bring in unseen therapist for each of those memories or did you do a few of them and this sort of generalized over all of them or well I think uh, Sandra brought in and Sandra correct me on this one Sandra had the unseen therapist there at every one of her sessions with every one of her clients and she'll, mm -hmm. she's agreeing to that Sandra taught me how to do uh, the methods just like your beautiful optimal EFT are very simple to use. So I learned how to do her methods. And uh, in the morning, I, I would have memory after memory on my own uh, before I would see Sandra. And I know the unseen therapist saved the memories that would be the toughest to uh, comprehend or understand or to heal to, what, to when I was with her. But I would have many other memories of different uh, kinds a lot of them are even conversations I overheard explaining what was going on in my life. And all that was, you know, I called upon the unseen therapist, although I didn't think of it in that term. I first of all prayed in the morning, and then I, when I, and then I would uh, ask for my priorities. And so that they would, they would come to me. Well, in, in a way, calling on the unseen therapist is a form of prayer. Yes, for sure. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Well, I don't know where I am there, but I, I uh, so memory after memory after memory came as a result of uh, Sandra. And then I had, I saw some other therapists uh, over that period of time, too, just to augment things, because, I mean, 50 years is a lot to overcome. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I saw other therapists, and I had, uh, I've had body memories with a deep massage therapist, an osteopath. Uh, and sacrocranial therapist, I had uh, body memories also. Mm -hmm. The memories with the sacrocranial therapist seemed to be a lot more emotional. When I would go into those memories, you, you know, as a little boy or, or I think everybody experiences them a bit differently. I, I seem to get the audio of the words that were spoken, and I, I do see 
see the pictures also. Uh, and I would most often be angry or, uh, you know, like I would often cry during these because you're, you're kind of taken right back to the time you were five years old and that happened to you. And so it would be, it can be very, almost a little mini trauma going back into the memory and having it, but then you can heal it. And as you go further and further with it, because I went on and on after a year or two, then of course they weren't as big a problem for me to go into, because I knew it was coming. What I did, I asked God for the worst possible memories right as, as soon as I knew the depth of depth and scope of what had happened to me or could imagine it, I asked God to bring to me the worst memories first because I didn't want the unseen therapist will only bring to you what you can handle. And I wanted to be get to the to the meat of the problem right away so that I so I knew I had a lot of healing to do. And that's basically what happened. Okay, that's an interesting point because see one of the things I I keep trying to discuss with people interested in optimal EFT is that the unseen therapist knows a lot more than I can know here in the earthly place. <laughs> knows the consequences of everything and all of that. It, 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 knows, it knows things that I, I have no way of knowing. And so you were saying that the unseen therapist would help you with those memories or bring up those memories that you could handle for now and it could help you with. Okay. Right. Um, I, I, I said that right, did I not? Yep. Okay. So now that, that's a form of intelligence that maybe some therapists, some place in the world or counselors, you know, have that ability. Uh, and maybe I do once in a while, but well, I sure don't have it to that degree at all. And so here it's done sort of automatically. And one of the difficult things that I have found that, that therapists and counselors deal with when they come across optimal EFT is they are, they are no longer the therapist or counselor. They are a guide in the process, perhaps. They are helping bring issues that put them on the table and this kind of thing, but they are not doing the therapeutic work. It is God, Jesus, unseen therapist, or whatever name if you're I calling can, upon. If I can jump in here. Sure. One of the things about meditation and so on is that it stills your mind and you go into a still point and when you're in that still point you can receive whatever is out there and if I'm in the still point then my clients can be entrained into that alpha brainwave state that just lovely quiet relaxed place and when I'm in that state then that which is out there can speak to me and tell me what needs to be done. Oh, so. Sandra, I, I've got the biggest hug for you. You kept <laughs> <laughs> the hug back. <laughs> well, the reason I'm giving you this big hug is because you just said in different terms an optimal EFT piece that's really, 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 really important. Um, the course, the course in Miracles has an interesting phrase here, and it says, essentially, the unseen therapist, Holy Spirit in this case, is, is, can do wonders, but it is limited by the limitations of the counselor, therapist, and the limitations of the client. Mm -hmm. and that, when they talk about limitations, it's talking about their ego, uh, their, we call it the guard at the gate, and so on, mm -hmm. that is hiding things, and so on. So, but what you just said was, and I'm going to use my terms, was that the, you are, as you get to this still point in meditation, and you've done, this has been practiced for you, you have climbed the spiritual ladder higher and higher and higher. And the higher you get up that spiritual ladder, the better it is, the more easy it is for you as a counselor to bring the patient along. Right. Uh, because of your elevation in this area, and that's why I call EFT or optimal EFT often personal work, because mm -hmm. of your own elevation here, you are able to bring Dave and other clients up higher and higher so that there's more and more on the table and the gate is open more. How did I, how did I do? Well, I wouldn't say because I'm elevated. I would say because I'm empty. And, you know, because, I mean, 
one of the things that I tell people who want to be therapists is that they have to live to be a therapist, not just go in and do it as a job. You know, like I barely drink, I get to bed early, I exercise, eat vitamins, eat properly, get my fresh air and sunshine, you know, pray. I'm open to the loving spirit of God, and I try to walk with it all day, you know. All right. Some people, you know, not mentioning any names like Dave, try you a bit, but, you know, you've got to try and keep it in mind. So you walk with God as much as you can, and nobody does that perfectly, just ask my kids. Um, however, that when I'm in session, then you go into a sacred place, and the Bible says if one person in your household is saved, not just you, but your whole household also. And David Hawkins, in his book, Power Versus Force, gives a map of consciousness, and the more, the higher you are, the more people that you can influence. But it's, it's not even raising ourselves up that high, it's just if we are just open and still and lose ourselves, then that which is out there can come in and inform us. All right. And, and thank you for that because the way you describe that being empty, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and this, gets to, this gets into semantics, but to me, being empty means you've got your ego out of the way. Yes. And using your turn, you've got spirit within you. That, mm -hmm. that to me is like elevating yourself up. So, I mean, we're, we're okay. talking about the same thing. We're just using different words, and, et cetera. Mm -hmm. but, but the point is, the point is the more, let's call it, the more spiritual we are able to become. That's another way to say it, whether it's empty or climbing a ladder or whatever. The more yeah. spiritual we are able to become as the counselor part of this, mm -hmm. um, the, more, the more our mere presence becomes healing in and of itself. Absolutely. And one of the things about this is that when I'm talking about these horrible, horrible things, I, you know, people get scared off. I can clear a room faster than anyone I know if I start to talk about my work. But I think I'm able to do that only because that loving, all-powerful, all-knowing intelligence is in me and helping me. And so it's like I begin with the end in mind, to quote somebody. Yeah. And uh, I know that everything's fine. And, you know, we just have to look into that darkness and shine a bit of light on it. Yeah. And you couldn't do that unless you had a bit of the light yourself. Yes. So the more light that you can hold, then the more you can look at this darkness. And one of the things I do want to share before I forget it is that the people who do this kind of work, the satanic uh, ritual people, uh, try to disenfranchise you from yourself and from the very elements of life. So I don't know if you've come across this, Gary, but they will do rituals that will disenfranchise you from earth, wood, metal, fire, water, like they'll try to drown you or they'll put you on in cold water and so on, so that your whole energy field collapses every time you come across any of these elements. And of course, you're bumping into those things all day long. And so either with EFT or optimal EFT or swaying or whichever method you want to use, you have to reestablish your, your balance with all of the elements of life. They'll, they'll do whatever they have to do to uh, disgust you, you know. Yeah, and, and that's one of the reasons why I started this thing off talking about it is the ultimate, the trauma upon trauma and trauma. It's so much larger than what we normally think of as trauma because all this other stuff comes along. And to try to unravel that for an earthly therapist is a job, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you've got to have help. And here we have the ultimate help, mm -hmm. unseen therapist by whatever name. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we, we are once again saying the same thing. Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right, anything more to add, Dave, Sandra? Dave? <laughs> I can't think of anything. We, we started to talk about the most horrific events. There's hundreds upon hundreds of horrific events that, uh, Sandra, would, her clients have been through, that I have been through. I don't know if it's, it's probably, we probably don't need to go into those any further, but 
I know I experienced uh, cutting the head off my own dog when I was six years old. It was a very powerful ritual that uh, we believe is called the apocalypse, uh, designed to, you know, drive you from having friends because I was the one who looked after that dog. And, uh, and then uh, the next morning when I went, got up, he wasn't there, and I didn't remember why, because, of course, for however, for whatever reason, I couldn't remember that it happened. Uh, so that was a horrific event. But uh, there's, and, yeah, there's and, go ahead. drinking of blood. That's a common one. Stabbing a man in the heart and drinking his blood. The man who I wouldn't kill, they would always kill. And uh, they would drink his blood. Yeah. Okay. And see, that's the graphicness of this, which is one of the things I want to portray. Um, you, you're talking about these things. They're not your favorite dinner time subjects. I understand that. But you're talking about them rather stoically, rather calmly, it, like you're, you're detached from them. They happen to you, yes, 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 but they have been in a way, this is my term now, Dave, yeah. neutralized to the point where they just don't suck up your life. It's just something unfortunate that happened and we go on with life in a more normal way. Did I say it right? Yeah, kind of. Uh, like, I like talking about it because I want people to be aware that they have to keep their eyes open because these uh, dangers lurk unseen in places where children congregate and where those others uh, vulnerable congregate. Uh, so I want people to know about it so they can be aware. And also, my example of being 50 years old and not knowing what was happening to me and my family, and my family didn't know, my wife, wife and children, I want people to be aware of that. Yes. Because yeah. that's going on right now throughout the world. And uh, if people are, if we can shine the light of truth on Satanism, it will be much more difficult uh, to do those things. Yes. Okay. So well we'll, said. Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Anything more? Well, I guess I was going to say, uh, you, you asked, and one of you, I was reading your Optimal EFT yesterday, and you talked about uh, anything spiritual that's happened. And uh, those of us, in our group with Sandra and our, our, uh, our little therapy healing group and Course in Miracles group, I've witnessed quite a few of those things. But for me, one thing that struck me was when I first found out that my mom and dad were the architects of all the stuff that had happened to me since, of all the satanic abuse since I was born, it, it triggered fear mind control programs that I had been programmed into me since I was a little boy. And I, I was in a, a a state of shock and fear at realizing what had happened to me and the number of people that were involved against me, which are in the hundreds. And uh, so I was in this fear, and, and uh, it was a very tough time. And I remember about a month after that, I was in a therapy session with Sandra. The priority for this day was a time before I was born. And I had just started my spiritual walk at that time, and I, I didn't know if that was even possible, to, to go have a memory of before this life. Yes. And as, as soon as I closed my eyes, I saw a, a bright orb of uh, light, very bright light. And as I realized that was my essence, that was me in spirit, it came into me that I came into this life to stop those who hurt me from hurting others. So... I want to talk about this. I want people yeah. to be aware of what's going on in the world. Okay, and you just you've just done that eloquently, Dave, very eloquently, okay? As have you, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. So, so if there's nothing more to add to this, I'm going to thank you both, you know, for spending your time here for being as graphic as need be, for talking about the possibilities, and I think people listening in here are going to have uh, you know, new avenues to to walk down as a result of all of this. So, my gratitude to all of you. Well, thanks for your great work too, Gary. Yes, absolutely. Okay.